good evening from Denmark. My name is Rikke Hansen and uh, I'm a graphic designer and educator and researcher and yeah, doing a lot of different uh, things. Uh, and uh, in, in the back you have my uh, website. So this is mainly about some of the graphic stuff I do. And what I want to talk about today is a little bit about views on creativity and then of some of my posters, my poster process. As you can hear, I'm not, um, my English is not perfect because I, my main language is Dan Danish. So I hope it will, um, it will succeed and you will hopefully understand what I'm, what I'm talking about. So let's start with views on uh, creativity. Um, some of the things that I do is uh, research on, on how, how to be curious, how to discover new ideas, how to experiment. And uh, I do a lot of workshops uh, around in, in the world uh, because of COVID uh, now for two years, it's always been none. But this was uh, from Beijing Design Week in 2019, where we did a workshop with Chinese students and they were experimenting and doing Chinese characters uh, in all kinds of things. And this is basically about thinking with your hands instead of thinking with your head. I will come back to that in terms of explaining more what, what I mean. This is some of the uh, things that I do. I love typography. I love to do different things with typography and also to experiment with different kinds of materials. So this is actually an A made out of uh, candy. Licorice is very popular in Denmark. And, and, um, and this is basically, I can't remember how many pieces of uh, licorice shoes that makes this huge uh, letter of an A. I think it's one meter. So, so I do these things just to play basically and to discover and learn new things. So this is one of the things that I really think as a designer, you should pay attention to. Of course, you also have to earn some money. You have to work to pay uh, your rent, but also have some time to, to play and to be curious and to do things that doesn't necessarily give you uh, money straight away, but it gives you some experience. So one of the things that we in Denmark talk a lot with, I talk with my students about is, I think this is a really, really nice way from uh, Confucius to, to talk about wisdom and free methods that we may learn wisdom. And when we're talking wisdom, we also kind of can equal it with, uh, with knowledge. So the first thing he's talking about is we can get wisdom or knowledge by reflection, which is the noblest. We can, get, we can secondly get it by imitation, which is the easiest. And the third one is by experience, which is the bitterest. What does he mean by that? When we're talking reflection, we're talking about imagination, we're talking about thinking. And of course, this is a very good way of getting new ideas to Imagine the use, because we are one of the few species on the earth who actually are able to use our imagination to create new things. Um, the second one, imitation, by that it means the act of copying. And, and I think always as a designer, you have to be aware of when are you using these free things? Um, copying can be, uh, can be good, when you have to learn something new, when you're learning Photoshop, or if you're learning a new recipe for cooking, you are looking into something that's already there and you have to copy it. But it's not a good thing if you go on Pinterest and you basically copy what other people already did or, or had the thoughts of. So, so by that, imitation is, is good to learn a technique but it's not good if you want to do something new. And the third one was by experience, by which we mean the knowledge of trying and doing something new. And, uh, and by this also by uh, making exper uh, experiments. And so these are basically three ways of 
getting knowledge, getting new, uh, learning new things. And, and always, I think also for my students to be aware of when are we, when are you tapping into these three things or using both or all three of them. So this is some of the things that I think it's really important to be aware of. So <clears throat> the last thing, experience in which um, Confucius um, was talking about is the bitterest is really related also to experimentation. And the, in Cambridge Dictionary, the uh, experimentation is the process of trying methods, activities to discover what effect they have. And this is some of the things that we really need to try to do a lot, try to make the students um, experiment and the risk by experimenting is also that you make failures, but failures are good in the way that you also learn something new. So what I was talking about previously is course thinking is a good way of and reflecting, getting ideas, and thinking is also making, but you can also turn them around and say making is thinking. And in this, we, we do some exercises in which we jump into uh, experimenting. And one of the ex uh, ex exercises we do is uh, one of IDEO's methods calling, called being an experimenter. And what IDEO is talking about is that an experimenter may be the most classic role and innovative place. Great inventors come to mind when we think of experimenters. You know the brothers Wright who invented the, the airplane. They were experimenting, they didn't have the money, but they had this idea of they want to get this machine up in the air and they want to have it to fly. So the, this is an example of, of experimenters. And another thing which I think is really important is that experimenters don't need to be geniuses. Experimenters share a passion of hard work, curious mind and an openness to serendipity. This is by the way, uh, from, uh, from a workshop in, uh, in Mexico I did back in 2016. Experimenters work fast, embrace little failures in the early stages to avoid mistakes later on. And they push ideas into more tangible visual form as quickly as possible. So this is one of the things that we, we do a lot. This is from a uh, workshop we did in, uh, in the Middle East in, uh, in Jordan at Pittsburgh University. So, um, so, also, experimenters recognize that the best time to try something new and risky is when you have nothing to lose. So creating this kind of spaces in which you allow yourself to be an experimenter is really, really important. And, um, and it, it, it can be one hour, it could be two hours, it can be three days, but having, allowing yourself to do these things are, are really, really important. So this is from a workshop in, uh, in India at NID, the National Institute of Design. And all the workshops we do, we normally have two or three days and they have to create, I think these guys, we had three days and they had to create hundred sketches each. So this is what we talk about when we really, really have to think fast and also to allow yourself to risk and, and just do things and then see what, what comes out of it. And, um, and it, it's always interesting to see how crazy and how wild and uh, weird uh, things can get. And then they also make, they, they, they make a whole um, catalog of ideas they can use for, for later on. So this is really, really uh, important. These are just some more uh, pictures. This is from a workshop in uh, also in Mexico. Sometimes we sketch a whole word. Sometimes it's only a letter. So here I ask. We only had, I think, three days and three hours, and uh, so I asked the students to do fifty letters. And uh, and this is some of the images from uh, from this workshop. This is from Denmark, and again one of the things. Um, that this exercise is also good at that you have to use what what you were able of of getting or if you walk out the door and you walk to the left and use the things that you see on your way on the left um, so you don't know actually what outcome it will be because you have to do it and also one of the things that we try to to encourage them is to play and to do the things and then try to develop on some of the words just to see what happens 
And sometimes it's gone, it's vanished, but, but when you use your phone as a documentary uh, to document all the sketches you have, you have the idea and you can always make it again or make it later on. Some of the students also use video. So this is from uh, India. On the left, you have some candy. And on the right, you have uh, an iron with hot water and they just make these small uh, animations uh, of it. This is another one. Again, in Indian, they have this uh, funny um, candy, which explodes uh, in your mouth. And, and the student was just playing around with it and, and made these really, really nice um, videos of uh, as a sketch and, uh, and uh, an idea. So a lot of different things. This is from, uh, from Jordan again, from Amman. And, and the students just basically brought what they have in their homes, uh, looking through the different rooms and looking through the kitchen and they brought the stuff. And then we use it for making these, um, these words. And here um, the students, actually when we started this workshop, the classroom looked like this. Everyone was sitting nice and at each table, and uh, this is um, this is two hours after we were kind of, people were running around and we're having fun and uh, doing a lot of sketches and inspiring each other. And I think that's also one of the important things to inspire each other and see what they do, borrow each other's stuff to make the words, uh, collaborate together uh, to do these things. And um, again, the 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 final. Uh, products that you make comes from what you actually have. So these were old uh, phones. One guy brought from his home and this is uh, because they're all Arabic words. So this means uh, hope. And this one is cover and hunger, and woman. I can't remember this one. And uh, I think this is something with clothes. Here you have love. And again, when you're just making these very fast, quick sketches and use your phone to take images of it, you, you have them and you can move on. So this is a fast way of moving on. Uh, this is from, uh, from Mexico. They were playing with... Oh, yes. Yes. So they were playing with the light and uh, muerte means uh, death. <laughs> they did a lot of uh, different sketches and basically what this exercise is also about is I think Maybe if we remember how it was when we were children, we were playing, we were not having any rules, we didn't have anything, any deadlines, we just did things. And this is also what this exercise is about, to allow yourself this curiosity and just see what, what comes out of it. Maybe a gift, maybe experience, but there's always something um, to, to gain from it uh, in the end. So this is... Very short, some of the things we do, and, um, and this I, I always this is a favorite picture of mine. This is from another project we did at the when I was teaching at the design school. This is Claire, one of my uh, previous students, who who has these post-its, and I think this is what we really try to motivate our students to. I'm, I'm sorry for the F word to be fucking positive and also be driven by fun. Because if it's not funny when you are doing design, even if you are doing serious design, you have you have to you have to have some fun within it, or humor, or playfulness. Because this is also where I I believe that that new things are, are coming from. So now I will jump to some of my uh, my poster process. In a way, always when we do posters um, or design process, uh, a design process is always kind of this divergent and convergent thinking. You have a new topic and you need to come to some decision point or a final result. And in the end, in the beginning, sorry, you, you use your imagination, you try different things and, and you're using divergent thinking. You allow yourself to 
get as much ideas as possible, everything what you can you can use. And then at a certain point when you've been experimenting and, and really doing the research, creating ideas, you have to make some decisions. And, and this is when we when convergent thinking is uh, is uh, important because you also have to make some decisions at a, at a certain point. So the whole design process is always about being open, researching in the in the beginning, then you have to make some decision. And again, from that decision point, being open again, dive again, thinking, decision again, and it goes on and on and on in, until you come to, to, the, to the final result. So, and in a way, this is also how it is with the posters. And the first one I, I want to, to show you, I, I'm not, not all of my posters I have processed because, um, Yes, you, you throw things out and you clean, but some of my posters, I have some process. And this, I want to show you the process of a post I did some years ago for the World Graphic Design Day, which is on April 27. And I, I, I think even when you are professional, uh, you never stop by being kind of afraid that you're not going to have a good idea or what I'm going to do. And everything seems like, there's a lot of possibilities and non-possibilities and, and this slightly feeling of panic. But the more experience you get, you also learn how to control this uh, feeling of uh, panic. So what I learned and what I do is I, I just start doing something. It, I never have a, a final idea in my head. That's not possible for me. I've, maybe some designers it's possible, but for me, it's not a possibility. I, I can't do it because I always, when I have, when I think now I have an idea and when I do it, it's not the same thing that I actually was imagining in, in my head. So I just start sometimes with typography, uh, sometimes with drawing things. These are done uh, on the computer. I always use my sketchbook and then do different sketches and sketches don't have to be beautiful. They have to progress or move you to, to your final idea. So do a lot of sketches. This was actually, I think, one of the first really, really quick, fast ideas I had in my, in my mind. So, um, so this graphic design kind of an egg idea, everything, you know, grow comes from, from an egg. So, so I just quickly had this idea and thought, okay, do it. Um, so I went up in the morning and fried some eggs and took pictures of it, took it in the computer in Photoshop. And then I tried to make this um, like a speech bubble uh, egg. And also in the oven, I had the, the shells and baked them and tried to bright inside them to see and took photos of it to see if this was something I could use in uh, for a post idea. So this is very, very quickly made. And um, and I was also looking into okay, what what is uh, what is language, which what is um, what is uh, communication? Because this egg idea didn't really turn out the way I wanted it to be. So I went back and I made a mind map, tried it all over again, tried to to think uh, and and do some idea generation of what what does it mean to to create when you are a graphic designer, and uh, and then again just doing some sketches, um, having again, still this egg, I don't know why, uh, using uh, ink to sketch because ink, you have to move your pencil fast. And in this way, you also have to think fast. And, uh, and just, I don't know if we were having lunch with eggs that day, but using my phone and taking some quick uh, pictures of it, I always have a little uh, black and white um, printer so I can do some fast prints. And these are just some experimenting. Then I walked around in my house hunting for materials, but it didn't really uh, turn out. And I went back to this idea again, um, but, but it, it didn't really, I don't know. I, I was looking into the speech bubble. What could I put into it? Should it be the date, April 27? Then I was trying to do some sketches. What, what other things could you put in this uh, speech bubble? So, um, so I tried to have the cursor which we all know from the computer and, uh, and to see if some of this uh, would, would, would be good to, to use. But uh, I always, when I have these discussions with myself and when you are in this process, I, I go for long walks 
and, and also in a way it's you have to use your hand you have to use your head you also have to have this feeling in your stomach if, if this is uh, good or not so and i didn't really like it so i started all over again and uh, it's always this okay few few seconds of panic and then just try to do something. And if you don't know what to do, then just start doodle, doodling. It's better to do something than doing nothing because nothing gets you now, nowhere. So and if you don't know what to do, I'm, I'm really, this is really so basic, but just starting with ink uh, and writing graphic design and then sketching. And then I, I always, I, when you start doing this doodling or sketching, then your mind starts creating ideas. So these are, um, some of them are recognizable ideas. Some of them, I have no idea what I was actually thinking. Um, something about explosion or things that gets out in the world. Something with a hand or speech spot bubbles. Um, again, these speech bubbles. And then was looking at this previous sketch that I actually had and, and up in the left corner, I actually Kind of so, okay, that's that's actually the idea I was looking for. So you have this pen tool in the corner with the Wi-Fi icon combined, and uh, and then I always look, I go and see, okay, how how does the pen tool actually look like, and what what kind of visual things are already out there, and also looking into did someone do a poster with pen tool. How did they look like? Because you don't want to do a poster that's already made. And then again, going back to the sketchbook and sketch some more pen tools in terms of how should it look, taking it into the computer and then progressing it. Also trying to have world graphic design day in typography, what kind, how should it look like? What about the colors, the composition? And then also make it in black and white to see how it works. And here it's uh, because I wanted to see the, the two typographies, which of them uh, was best. And this is the final one in color. So this is a, in a way kind of up, up and downhill uh, walk uh, to get to this final poster. And this is actually made in one weekend. So again, working fast and do a lot of things, that's really, really important. And, and, and I think also to stick your mind to it, it's, it's also important. Don't go too often on Facebook or Snap or things like that so that your mind kind of get other words. It's, it's kind of ha having, um, having your mindset uh, around the problem and then try to, uh, to find out how, what, what solution you should do. So this is another poster. This is a, a poster, an environmental poster. And um, the brief here, the poster is called Not a Fairy Tale. And the brief was, um, choose a fairy tale and make a poster on the topic plastic in the ocean. So this was for an exhibition in Ecuador. And I was, I think it's always also important to do a lot of research when you are, when you are making posters. And, and especially when you have a certain topic that I, I we always talk with my students about, be really aware of what you think you know and what you actually know. That's really, really important to 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 um, to keep in mind is this something you really know about or is it something you know you think you know so i do a lot of research i watch documentaries i read uh, articles um and and while i'm doing these i'm always sitting and and do sketches so when i'm sitting and and making notes for, for a documentary i also do sketches and this was some of the sketches i did because one of the things that i discovered was that plastic in the 1950s when it was invented, it was really a kind of miracle and everyone was really uh, happy about it. And all these products, uh, one single use products were made and we just used them and we throw them out and everything was good. And now uh, in, in 2020 or 21, we can see that it's really, really a disaster because we didn't really think of what are we actually going to do with all with all this plastic, all this leftovers? So, um, so I had this idea of miracle disaster thing, um, and how how should I do that? And I also did some other sketches, 
And again, these are not beautiful sketches, but a way of progressing my, uh, my idea. And then I was thinking of that um, because it's called uh, the overall exhibition was called not a fairy tale. And then we have a very, very famous author. He's called uh, Hans Christian Andersen. He's a Danish poet and an author. And uh, he was uh, doing, he was writing fairy tales over 150 years ago. And one of the fairy tales that is really famous is this fairy tale about the Ockley Dockling, which was published in 1843. And the fairy tale here is about, if you don't know it, that you have this swan that was born and uh, it was it got away from from its original family so it went went into uh, uh, a farmer's um, how do you say it uh, in a farm with um, with with the duck and uh, chickens and um, and they they didn't like him in the beginning because he didn't look uh, as beautiful yellow he was gray uh, and then and they were not very friendly to him, but he turned out to this um, to this ugly swan. So I thought, okay, this this miracle disaster things that that in a, we had something in the fifties that was really really uh, genius. We thought was turning into a disaster, and the ugly ugly thing was the opposite uh, story about it. So I made we had some leftovers from uh, a party. And, um, and I made this swan out of uh, plastic spoons and knives and took photos of it and then put it into the computer in Photoshop and uh, cleaned it and made a lot of details for it. And also looking into that the eye has this little, little uh, flare, lens flare, and, um, and then also how should the water be? And again, really important what kind of topography to use and testing a lot of different types and see how, how it should be in the composition. And I never have an idea, I just do things and test and see how, how does it look, if I like it or not. And again, also looking into the water, how, how do you have this one that it actually have the feeling that it's in the water and then putting the topography on it. So. So this is basically the final poster. You have the not a favorite tale, and then you have in the water floating uh, the type saying uh, plastic does not belong into the ocean. So this was the final poster. Another one I did uh, was a poster about electronic waste or e-waste. And uh, this one, actually Denmark is one of the worst countries in terms of uh, of producing electronic waste because people here are rich and uh, if they don't like the phone, they just buy a new one. So, so even we, we kind of, we have an idea of that we are really, really looking into the, event, the environment, but the truth is that, that we are actually not. So I wanted to make this a uh, poster and it's also an inspiration because uh, I always take my students on study trips. And some years ago we were in, uh, in Gambia and we did a project with uh, a high school there with my young design students. And on the way to this uh, school, we had to drive uh, through uh, a, a huge uh, amount of, uh, it was a big dump, with full of uh, electronic waste. This is not the real picture. I didn't take picture of it. But what we realized every morning when we were driving through, uh, passing this huge area of um, electronic equipment um, was that this is not produced by the Africans. This was actually uh, left there from the Europeans. And also a lot of kids were, kids were running around um, collecting the, the metals because they can earn money from it instead of being in school. So, so I went, when I did this poster, I went to the, we have a local recycling store and, uh, and I bought some old electronic equipment. And then this poster is, this poster is one of the posters in which I didn't do a lot of sketches. I had the idea and then I just built it. And this is built in full size uh, next to my, my house outside. 
and uh, and also the the white fabric i bought it in the recycling store so sometimes you just go on an adventure and you see what do they have in the recycling store and this this was some of the things they had and then put it into the computer and then put the the text on it and one of the things that i really want to do with this poster was that when you're looking at it oh you oh sorry you you, you maybe not in, in, the, in the beginning see the, all the, the electronic equipment that is uh, in the corners. So, so in this way, it allows you to go around and you see these small pieces that is almost covered by the white fabric. And it, at least in Denmark, a lot of people know this red phone because this is uh, designed by a design company, Danish design company called B&O which is really popular and famous. So everyone knows that this is a Danish design uh, in that one. And then when you go to the bottom, after you, you read the main out of sight, out of mind, you have uh, e-waste is not somebody else's problem. So, so there's a, there are on purpose different steps in it. You have all the, the white space that you see first, and then you go out and see the, the electronic equipment. And then also the third or fourth step is when you look at the corners of this white fabric, the three of them are uh, full and, and uh, not damaged. But in the fourth one down in the corner, there's a slightly burning of it. So this is also kind of the storytelling that this, you can't just cover it up. You can't, can't just, because Europe just dump all the electronic waste in uh, in another continent, it's not gone. It's still there. So this is what I what I wanted to uh, to do with this. And in terms of making this fire, I put fire on it and took a picture of it in the end. So this is made real. And then the typography is it put on um, at the end. And I had I only had one day for this, so I took all the images and then I had to go to a meeting in Copenhagen. So I collected and gathered the post and the typography on, on the train on my way to, to Copenhagen. And this is sometimes how it is that you just have to plan how do you finish it up and, and make it and, and at getting things done. So another uh, posters I've been doing is uh, for posters without borders. This is an invitational uh, poster. And I can't remember, I think it's four or five years ago, uh, Posters Without Borders did this um, reaction, reaction, interaction. Uh, and we were asked to do a poster that in a kind of way should um, discuss some of the things that are going, out in the, uh, going, going on in the world, maybe some political stuff or some society's uh, issues. And I thought that, one of the things that could be interesting to do with this poster or to say with this poster is that you are the power of change, that you actually, each one of us are empowered to make change or collect people and do something. You can have change from the top of society, but you could also have change from the bottom of society. So, um, so this is what I wanted with this uh, poster, which was also exhibited in, uh, this is in Mexico, in uh, Jalapa and uh, also here together with some poster friends, Parisa Tutkori from, uh, um, she's based in, Mex in the US now, but basically from Iran and Pekka Lori, who's uh, from Finland and having the, um, the Biennale in, uh, in, in Finland. And then also uh, Sofia Chi, which is uh, director of the Biennale, poster Biennale in Taiwan. So, Another one I also did for, um, for Posters Without Borders. This was, I think, last year or in 19, I can't remember. But in this one, we were asked to do specifically, each designer were given a, a goal from the United Nations. And um, I was given uh, goal number five, which is, which is about gender equality. So just a few, very look at, um, uh, my sketches. I wanted to have something visual about equality. I did a lot of sketches for this one because I thought it, it, this is a topic that is really, really important to me because I travel a lot and I see how um, 
of course, the world is progressing overall, but it's still, there's so, in a way you feel that it's, it's a long, still a long way uh, to, to get um, into the situation that both men and women are equal. Even Denmark is not that, I think we are top 14 in the world. We're not even in top five. So, so we, we also have, a, have um, some things to do. And, um, and for this one, I was having a lot of sketches. And then I, I basically, when I was reading, what is this description of the, the goal number five? And when you read it, especially as a woman, I, 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 was, I was getting so pissed because I thought, really? We're not, we're not, we're still there in which we have to discuss if women are allowed to, uh, to own a property or to, to decide on their own body and things like that. That is so ridiculous, but this is how it is. So, um, so I wanted to kind of, when you are reading text, you always highlight things. So this is why I use this highlight pen and then, uh, and then you have this equality sign within it because almost everything in this text is so important. And I was also really, really, testing a lot in terms of what kind of topography I'm going to use for this. Um, and and I, I made a lot of, I think I made 50 different posters with 50 different type of, type typography. And um, and this one, it's not on purpose, but I, I, I liked this one. And and um, ironically enough, this, this font is called uh, Utopia. So there's a little bit of at least uh, South Danish sarcasm in it that uh, this is still, um, little utopia that 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 we will ever get to to the point where men and uh, women are, are equal, but but we we can hope. And um, yeah, this one is uh, also exhibited. This was uh, exhibited last year, I think. Oh, no, this year in uh, in, Tex in Texas. So uh, this was a bust up place. And the idea is also that when you have the posters out in this side, you can actually place a man and a woman. Uh, on each side of it, and then you have this equality. You know, this is how it should be in the world. Another one is uh, um, poster for Speak Up, uh, which was uh, also an invitational poster. And um, and the in the brief it said, "Dangerous world now, and a better world tomorrow." And also uh, this poster, we we as designers could decide on what what do we want to to uh, discuss in our poster and I, uh, I I always have difficulties in understanding evilness. I can't really understand how people can be so bad to each other. I don't, I, I, when I was, I think 11 or 12, I was reading a lot about um, the Nuremberg uh, processes, which is uh, the trial of the Nazis after the second world war, because I, I couldn't, really get my mind around or understand how, how can how can how can you be so evil in doing this and I can't really understand Dash or Isis or Boko Haram uh, and how, what 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 is going on in in the head of these people how, how can you do so such dreadful things so I kind of got to this conclusion that if you if you are capable of being so evil there there's nothing between um, in, in your head, so so there's no empathy. Empathy, if you if you are an empathic person, I don't believe you can you can be bad. So this is why I did this poster that the A and the H is uh, leaving this head, and there's only uh, emptiness inside it. And I had a really also discussion with myself: what what person are you going to use? We don't want to use uh, someone who is too recognizable. I don't like, and I'm always liking when people, I don't like Trump, but I don't always agree when people are using Trump in a poster and exposing him as a pig or something or, or ugly. I, I don't like that. So I thought, okay, you have to have something that is neutral. So the only thing I could think of at that time was actually using one of my own images and then transforming that one so that you have this sense there's a person behind it, but uh, it's not some famous person. It's, uh, it's basically myself I, I used. So um, 
yes, that's the one. This one was uh, a poster for uh, Umberto Eco, an homage to uh, Umberto Eco. And I really like uh, Umberto Eco, uh, not only for his uh, books. Um, these are some of the books he is really famous for, but he's also uh, writing uh, books about semiotics. So when I did my uh, master, uh, theoretical master, I was reading uh, Umberto Eco. But he had a lot of interesting uh, books, and one of them um, also is about uh, the pendulum, which he was very occupied with. So I thought that was an interesting thing to look at. And again, when I'm doing these posters, I was actually listening to a lot of, of uh, lectures by Umberto Eco and his way of looking at the world and his humor and, and these things. And I was also looking at what, what, how, how, how does he dress? Um, is there something specific that you could use from that? So these are just mainly some, some uh, sketches. These are done on the computer. Sometimes it's in the, in the sketchbook, sometimes in the computer. And if the computer is not really progressing anywhere, then I go out and I just do something by hand. And again, just to see what happens. This is made by paper and cutting. And in a way, I like this one. Uh, and then I also I asked my husband to dress up. I, I needed some photos in black and white because I wanted this torso. And I also wanted this uh, pixel dotted so that when you see it on a long distance, it's uh, really sharp. And when, you, when you're when getting very close to the poster, it's kind of uh, bending into to dots. Um, it didn't really work. Um, so I... I always, I also have a little, I have a studio, I have a letterpress studio uh, next to my house here, to my studio. So in that one, I went up, this is just some, I have all my letters upstairs. So this is just for you that you can see this uh, studio. I have seven or eight printing machines in different sizes. And then also outside, when you're up there, you have, we have horses. So this is my garden and my horses, and then different machines for, for printing. So I did, I did uh, the type on um, with the big wood types, and uh, printed them and digitalized them and took them back to the computer. And these are just some tryouts and some tests in terms of how composition should look like and also the style, and then also trying to do something that was kind of contrast to this this uh, handmade uh, types, really glossy and. Um, yeah, testing again. And, and this is always progressing while I'm doing it. For me, posters is like when you are building a snowman, that you start with some snow in the corner of the plane, and then you'll see how it progresses. And then in the end, there will be a snowman, but you have no idea before you get there. So this is the, the, post, the final poster. And this is from the exhibition in, uh, in La Paz at the Design Museum. The poster is almost, I think it's two meter high, so it's a really, really huge one that is uh, hanging in, in the place. This one, um, very, very quick, um, was a poster invitation from Iran, and um, the headline, or the brief was, uh, Children are the Future. And sometimes I, I make these dogmas to myself um, that if here, in, for example, here it says children are the future. So I was think, thinking, okay, I don't want to have a child in my poster. And then also to, to, um, to spark my way of thinking or my creativity, then I have to do something different. And again, I did a lot of research from it and I didn't want to do some sweet poster or things like that. And I've always been following uh, Greta Thunberg and um, I, hope, I, I think you know her. Uh, she started this um, uh, school striking in the age of 15. And, and now I think really that she's doing uh, something good in terms of the discussion of how we can help the, the environment. And also I thought, okay, this is quite unbelievable that you have a 15 year old, now she's 18, that has, that, that, that can do more for the environment or for the discussions of the environment than uh, all the world leaders uh, are doing. And, um, 
And um, I was looking into that and I thought, okay, this poster, uh, also a little ironic, I, I, I made this. So this is saying, sorry, we stole your future. We were too busy burning fossil fuels, consuming, getting richer, posting on Facebook. Because my generation, I could be her mother, so I'm, I'm kind of one of them. And, and when I'm looking at what people are doing, um, of course, we try to be more in, environmental friendly, but, but we're not really sacrificing that much. So, um, so this is, um, yeah, kind of sarcastic approach to, uh, to, the, to the topic and, and, and also a slap uh, to myself because I'm also the one of them who are, who are posting on Facebook. I try not to consume that much. I try not to buy a lot of stuff that I don't need, but it has to change the whole uh, mindset. So this was uh, exhibited uh, also last year in uh, this uh, is the Biennale in Warsaw. They had an outside exhibition and they had this SOS uh, Earth uh, exhibition and here the poster is also one of them. So uh, yes, what do we have here? Oh yeah, so sometimes I again play uh, a little bit and this poster I also laser cutted the one in, in wood. I made it I think 50 centimeters high and, um, and I, I wanted to print with them it in, in my ears in my print workshop. Um, and then from, uh, it didn't really succeed, but the leftovers, all the letters, I kept them for maybe, you never know if you can use them for something. And, and I, I did these kind of experimentations again um, with trying to put ink on them and a watercolor paper, and then you get these kind of things out of it. So this was again, just having, allowing myself, just having a few hours to play and see what, what happens. And again, using uh, your camera to take pictures of it. And this, these letters were used for um, uh, an exhibition, um, the fourth block, which is, was about uh, Chernobyl and Chernobyl and uh, Fukushima. So again, having the, the images and then taking them to the computer and just see what comes out of it and how can you use it. Um, this is black and white. And this one is uh, the final poster that I did. And the whole idea is you have uh, Fukushima and a red dot for Japan. And you can also turn this around and then you have Chernobyl with a yellow uh, dot for Ukraine. And this is um, from the exhibition uh, in uh, Ukraine where also the poster uh, was exhibited. Another poster which was done last year uh, for the COVID. Um, and this exhibition was called COVID Exit. So I was thinking, because I've been doing some Corona uh, posters, I don't want to have the Corona virus uh, within uh, the poster, uh, not as a specific image. So here, this is done in September. And by September, we kind of, we're more and more aware of that distance is a good thing. And this poster had to be uh, 1.6 meters by two meters. Uh, no, sorry, 1.2 by 1.6 meters. And if you have the diagonal, you have two meters. And this is what we kind of have to keep in mind to have, at least in September, have the distance of two meters. So I thought, okay, this is a way of showing people if you actually from the bottom um, on the diagonal, if you use the diagonal as, uh, as the distance, then you know uh, if, you are, if you are distant enough. So these are some of the tests in the computer. This was basically done in, uh, in Illustrator. And I don't have a favorite program. I use Illustrator, I use Photoshop or InDesign, depends on what I'm doing. So this is for, uh, the exhibition last year. And this was the, the poster. On, uh, on the street. We just talked about uh, when before starting the Tolerance Poster Project, which is um, a project done by Miko Illich, who is based in New York. And uh, this is the website he's doing. I think for now he's been inviting designers from all over the world. And the collection is around 150 or 60 posters. And he invited me back in 2019 and um, 
I was really puzzled with what I wanted to do. Um, and tolerance can be many things. And it could be also on a specific topic. Um, but I was, I was, um, my head was going around this tolerance that it, it's something in a way to be tolerant, it's, it's your brain controls if you're tolerant or not. So it's, it's a way something, we have a, a saying in, in Danish that it's between your ears. So I had this ear thing that tolerance should be placed in between it in some way. So these were some sketches. And there also, there's this saying, you know, or, or also when you look at comic cartoons, sometimes you have an angel on the one shoulder and a devil on the other one. So there's always this twist in being, are you a devil or an angel in terms of if you, if you like people or the subject or, or whatever. So, so I had these red color for the devil and the, the feather for, for the angel. And, and these were some of the ideas, but it didn't really, didn't really work and uh, I didn't really like it. So again, I was actually inspired by the previous Danish author, Hans Christian Andersen, because he also wrote a fairy tale um, about, and now I can't remember the name, I'm sorry, but it's, it's uh, a fairy tale that goes on in a chicken, uh, house there are a lot of hens sitting and then one feather is falling down and this gossip goes on and 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 it it moves out of the chicken house and it moves to the city and then certainly it it blows to be a big big story and the whole moral is that uh, also how we are communicating now on digital media is you put something out there and then within seconds it can explode and it can be interpreted to a lot of different things so i was using this fairy tale to um to um to make uh, as an inspiration for my poster and um, using uh, photography, taking uh, pictures and then putting this into the poster. And again, gossip, talking, dialogue, this would be kind of a, maybe more abstract, but a kind of speech bubble. And then also finding out how do you place the different um, graphics, uh, the typography, what do you want to say? And then just testing out, doing things. And uh, and this is the the final one. And in the in the in the main in the original story, there are five chickens sitting in this house who are making this gossip that is exploding. And this is also why you have uh, five Twitter birds on the poster and as a comment to Twitter. And when I made this, uh, there was a certain president in the U.S. who was really really using Twitter a lot. So it's basically also a comment to. The, the use of, of Twitter and, and how things can really go in, in many directions, not always the right directions. So these posters are, yeah, also been, as I explained, exhibited different places in the world. This is in, uh, in Yugoslavia. This is in the church in, uh, I think, Bratislava or Slovenia. And this is from Uruguay. And as Olga was mentioned, it's coming to, I think, your place as well. So that's nice. How are we doing with time? We only have, I think, two posters. This one is a Biophilia poster, which I did as a collaboration with a Mexican designer called Ana Mureta in Mexico. And I think also it's nice sometimes because Aram, um, uh, I met him back in 2016 and now we are really good friends. And it, I think it's always fun also to find designers who are not necessarily doing the same things that you are. So we made this uh, poster together and, and, um, and this is the fun thing when you do posters with another designer who thinks in a different way that it, it, it will turn into something completely different that you were expecting, but you also learn a lot from it. This are some of the sketches uh, we did. Aram is not so good at English. So when we communicate, we are sketching and communicating through sketching. And then we also sketch on top of each other's uh, drawings and work on each other's files. So this is a way of, of uh, progressing um, and, and making a, uh, 
decisions and, and the final design. And also we had, uh, I don't think I have it here, but a lot of different uh, color testing in, in terms of how should it look like. So this was the final one. And this is from the exhibitions uh, hanging out. I think this is really nice when it was out in the nature as a poster. And Adam also took the poster and um, I hope there's no sound on this one. A little bit. But made a sill screen so that uh, we actually also made a version uh, in, uh, in, uh, in black and white. This is uh, one of his friends who was just making these sill screens. So this poster is also going to hang uh, in, uh, in Jalapa uh, in black and white. And then basically with a, with a green heart, heart. Another one that is really important to me um, in terms of sparking uh, discussions is, this is a poster competition. I think it's always every second year, it's called uh, Mut zu Mut, which is German and uh, translated courage to race, so rage. So you basically can choose whatever topic you want to do. And for me, again, I did this um, gender equality uh, poster and traveling a lot uh, around in the world. And when I see documentaries or things like that, there are things that makes me angry. And one of the things is really that we don't have gender equality. So this is the post I made. And um, again, sorry for the fucking word, but it is important in this topic to really also use it um, and um, Yes, this was selected and I don't have the whole process for this one, but we actually made uh, the, the typography for, uh, for another project in which we were doing. So, so it has this kind of nice uh, edges and little three dimensional way. And when you see it out in the street, uh, it's, it's more flat, but when you go closer to it, it's, it will pop uh, out of the, of the, of the surface. So this is uh, from the, the exhibition in, uh, in Germany, in Heidelberg, and it's been in, traveling in, I think in Berlin and in uh, Hamburg as well. And it, I like the exhibitions and the posters where they getting out in the streets, because this is what posters are supposed to be in the, in the streets, or at least that people, ordinary people can see them and you, you can spark uh, this, you can, you can communicate with them as well. So the last thing I was uh, will show you is uh, we just did this uh, last month. This is a uh, peace process, which is uh, started by Pasha Collaborative. And um, this is a poster uh, um, show that started basically in Iran and the US, and then it expanded by 20 posters from Iran and 20 posters from US. And then it, it, the year after it went to Mexico, 20 posters from Mexico and 20 posters from China. And so every year it, 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 a new country is added and 20 new designers from this country is, is added and, um, and they make posters uh, of the topic piece. So I did, um, I, we were hosting in, uh, in the, our small uh, school in, the, in Hoya. We were hosting the, the exhibition. So I also did this uh, poster for the main uh, exhibition. And uh, this is a, a big space. It's an old uh, factory, weaving uh, factory uh, in which we were exhibiting. And I also uh, uh, asked the municipality that we wanted to exhibit all the, the posters in, uh, in, uh, in this, in Hoya city and also in the city next to it, uh, which is called Turner. So we had, 100 professional posters, which were exhibited in the, in the both of the cities, which I think it was 200 posters. And then we also had 100 posters inside this, uh, this factory. And we also did um, these posters with our students. So there are 50 posters exhibited um, with, with, the, um, with the professional one. So 150 in, in all. But out in the city, it's basically the professional posters who are there. So this is um, a small glimpse from, from the, the city and, and in the street, uh, we, when, when the posters are starting, there's uh, the main uh, poster saying 20 uh, posters for peace. And then when you're driving down the street, you, you will meet some of the, the posters that are there. And yes, my poster, I... Uh, 
to be honest, I was a little angry, not with uh, making the posters, but may, uh, angry with humanity in general, because I thought, okay, if you're really, when you're doing research and I was looking into a lot of topics and things and what do I want to discuss in terms of peace? Do you want to do something about war or uh, weapons or should it be political? What kind of thing should you, would you, would you like to, to put in the poster? I was also looking at them. Um, oh, now I'm sorry, I can't remember the name of the base ball player who kneeled and get executed from the NBA. You know the name of him. Um, so, so there are so many uh, things, but also what we as humans are doing to the, to the planet and to environment and sometimes also to animals. Um, I, I was, I thought, okay, really? Are we not, are we not progressing further than this? So, so this is the poster I did, and uh, it's called uh, "Evolution of Peace." We're not we're not really there uh, yet, but hopefully, with human development, we will get there. So you can read it: "Evolution of Peace" or "Evolution of uh, Humanity." And the whole idea of this came from this. We always see this evolution of of humanity. So I was doing some again quick tests. And using my camera and my phone to see how can I, what, what does it give uh, when I'm folding it, the paper like this, and also just trying to do it in typography, see how it works. It's not beautiful, that's not the purpose. It's just to see, okay, is there something here that I can use for my post? Should I cut it? Should it be completely flat? Is it interesting? These kind of things, turning things around. Can I read it? Uh, what about legibility on the, on the text? And then also taking it into the computer, trying with colors, um, trying it because green is the color of hope. So maybe it should be green. But also I was aware of that when you're putting posters out in the street, it really, really, you don't have many seconds for people to, to see it and to understand what is going on. So it needed some more contrast and there's always this balance of making something really aesthetical nice and making something maybe not that aesthetical nice but that is communic uh, communicating so this is why it 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 turned into this uh, black uh, poster and this is um, out in the, in the street in the different cities and depending on which angle you're seeing the poster it's it's actually moving uh, a little bit and, and and I like that and then also the whole main thing is when you see it from a distance you were still able to to read it because if it was a really really nice illustration with thin lines then you have to be really close uh, to the poster in terms to see what is actually going on and this is from uh, the exhibition inside in the in this uh, weaving uh, factory so um, there's all the names of the professional posters and all the designers and all the names of the students uh, designers. And actually the four on the right are some of my students from, uh, from this year. So this was one of the first uh, exercises they had to do. So these are some of the images. These are some of the professional. And we actually mixed the, the professional designers and the students uh, within it. And for this, is a, it's also a nice experience for the students to to see when you're working hard and you're doing a lot and, and the effort and, and, and how, how this can be. This is when it's still empty and this is for the opening. So and you can see people are not wearing masks because we, we have still Corona, but it's not that dangerous. And then we also use the space to do a fashion show. So the young students were actually uh, during the exhibition making this uh, fashion show, the fashion design students, which was really nice that we have this combined um, experience. We have a drone line at the school. So this is why the drone guys were, were filming the fashion show and putting it together. So the posters were the background of the, the fashion show, which was really nice. 
Yes, and this was the last one, final poster, just to, I didn't know what slide I should put in the end. So I just put this uh, poster, which I did last year about hope, which is also, I think, uh, being a lot of places by now and left for, what do you call it, inspiration. So thank you.